Welcome to Edina. With us today, we have R. Raj Gopal, editor at large at the Telegraph India. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Edina. So, Telegraph. Telegraph is famous for its eye-grabbing headlines. So, was it a conscious decision on the part of editorial board to have this kind of a paper? When was it taken, and how is it received overall? Um, Telegraph always, uh, not just Telegraph, all newspapers in India used to give uh, focus, give a lot of attention, pay a lot of attention to headlines at one time. Then, um, for some reason, I think it's because of um, uh, that there was a sudden interest in sports and uh, show business news, and because of that, political news took a back seat, and then all the headline skills, everything went into giving good sport, when, what you call unusual sports headlines, unusual, so the uh, unusual entertainment headlines about superstars and all that, and politics, uh, it took a back seat. That is what happened then, but when in, uh, I became the editor in 2016, there was also a new challenge. Uh, the television already was very strong in India, television news, then social media was, uh, online media was rising. Yeah. And then newspapers usually, uh, unless we have exclusive news, which is not possible every day, uh, the news we are giving is actually 20, almost 17, 18 hours late, because already online media, the, if something very important, Supreme Court judgment or something happens in the morning, uh, within within minutes actually, you know, people, uh, uh, especially English readers, it, it, all readers, they get to know about it. So what do we? So why should anyone read a newspaper the next day? That it's an important and like I told you, um, uh, unless you have very exclusive news and very arresting news, very important exclusive, which is not possible for a newspaper to do it every day. So then, with the available and another big uh, because of the explosion, information explosion, especially because of the internet, uh, newspapers. I think average reader spends not more than four minutes in a new, with the newspaper. If you, if some, if a person spends four minutes, we should consider ourselves lucky. Most, especially youngsters, don't. Uh, they just look at it, and then uh, what? We increasing feedback we got was people are seeing newspaper, not reading it. You know, mm -hmm. so there was a, so to make it visually appealing, there was a was thing for another thing. If we get three minutes, then w there are so much, so many things in newspaper, and if you, then every every page is fighting for attention. And page one is also an important paper page, but over time we have noticed that people are going first. Uh, Nobody is even looking at the French page news because French page news is already familiar news. They've already seen it on television the day before or online media, so it's a familiar thing. So people hardly used to look at uh, the page one. They go straight to sports news or their special interest, city news, which are nice. entertainment, especially entertainment. And we have we have a very very strong entertainment section called T two. So we were actually fighting with, internally we were fighting with T2. See, if you have a Shah Rukh Khan and if you have some politician, Shah Rukh Khan in the entertainment section and the politician on front page, nobody will look at the front page. <laughs> so that is why we needed to, we needed to somehow grab the attention and that is how slowly um, they had. So it was a conscious decision in that sense, but it was not this campaigning, the kind of campaigning uh, style of journalism, uh, that ha uh, headlining, that happened because of the way the country also at that time took a very, very decisive right turn. And we thought that as a newspaper, it's our responsibility to oppose it. And so it, it is a mix of uh, the, to give big headlines was a conscious decision, but the nature of the headlines that evolved over time as a reaction to what is happening in, in the country. So this was since? Um, see, it was, like I told you, Telegraph was launched in 1982. It was always uh, known for his headlines, uh, especially when uh, Indira Gandhi was assassinated. Uh, 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 the uh, headline, uh, the, the founding editor M. J. Akbar gave it. I think it was uh, Indira assassinated, nation wounded. That was there. So it was a very. We always used the to. Style was the Style was always uh, that culture was there. So it is. It is nothing that I invented or it, the credit should not go to me. It credit should go to the newsroom culture of the uh, newspaper. And like I said, it was nothing unique about Telegraph. Also, Indian newspapers, all newspapers, not just Indian news, newspapers, all because headline is the biggest thing we have got, the biggest weapon we have. Um, so we, I, my belief is that we should use it to the maximum effect every time. But it's a credit that in the age of social media, yeah. the news clip that is shared is from Telegraph headline. 
Yeah, it, it so happened that, uh, see, again, if you give something in very big font and this thing, it's always reader friendly. It's, it's a few words. Usually it's a, just a few words and an image. So it is that way, it is tailor made for uh, social media also. But again, I'm saying it is not uh, consciously made because I am not on social media at all. Because I, uh, my, my, so it, is, it just happened like that. So it, that is, it is a so next question is, uh, since we are talking of headlines yes. in this age of social media, mm. how much time do you spend in creating these headlines? Does it take a lot of time? This is a question for journalists yes. who are impressed with these things. Yes. See, you, usually what happens is the newspaper, as technology improved, everything happened. Uh, we had assumed that uh, it will give us, we will save a lot of time. Because earlier we didn't, we had to, so printing used to take a lot of time to make a block and all that. So we used to work in a very narrow um, window. Of the, but then later we realized as technology um, uh, improved, actually we did not, the time actually shrank because they started printing early then. So that earlier training of having to do things very fast, that always, that, that is actually a problem of this uh, early burnout in newsrooms also because the pressure is very, very intense, deadline pressure. Though I think television it's much more, so I should not be saying that we have more pressure than television, but by nature, the, any deadline driven business is very, 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 there's a, there will be pressure. So headlines, usually what happens is, it is not that we decide on a headline and do the story. It's always the stories have to drive the headline. Otherwise, the headline will never work. You can't have a headline first and then a story. So when the story happens, what happens? There's generally a discussion among, uh, it is not a formal kind of discussion. We, people just say what they feel about something. So often that is how headlines uh, come into being. When, when, when from the people, uh, my colleagues reaction, I can make out this is what they, that has struck them, you know. It may not be as something uh, very, poli very, very ideological, very political, but often the first reaction of when something happens, the first reaction gives us, uh, mm, uh, I will give an example, in, during the Shabari, uh, are you familiar with the Shabari Mala controversy in Kerala? So uh, it, there was a one particular day, there was a call, band called by the BJP or supported by the BJP. And in a district called Palakkad, a uh, lot of uh, these band supporters, they stood in the middle of the road and started throwing stones at the police. So there was a picture, it's an, it's an outer exclusive picture. Everybody had the picture, PTA agency sent the picture. So the, it was, so the, when the picture landed on our screen, one of my colleagues uh, said that there's a good picture from Kashmir, people throwing stones. So then I looked and I realized, because I am from Kerala, I realized it's not Kashmir, it's Kerala. Yeah. But what my colleague said is correct. It looks exactly like Kashmir. Mm. The, uh, when the, the students used to, youth used to throw stones at the you know, army. Mm. Because uh, the, then I realized, so we, that day our headline was, if this happened in Kashmir, we will call them terrorists. If it, if it happened in Kerala, we are calling them devotees. You know, you know, so uh, that, so what I'm saying that it, it came as a reaction to a person's first reaction is it looks like, you know, so this is what was happening in Kashmir, we would have opened fire on uh, those protesters and called them terrorists, whereas in Kerala, you know, we will say that these are uh, devotees of uh, 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 deity. So that, it, 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 so that is often headlines come from the way, so if you are very, a, a, a desk or your colleagues who react to things and you have that kind of a culture, it always helps uh, in producing the paper. So it's often, like I told you, it happens on its own. There's no, so we don't have a formula. Interesting, very interesting example. Uh, so Telegraph, as you said, 2016 onwards has taken this uh, conscious decision yes. because the way politics of the country is also yes. going. And uh, probably Telegraph is probably only one of the one of the mainstream print papers who have taken such a stand. I uh, know other papers also take, but I think consistently, if you look at the f frequently and consistently, I think yeah, Telegraph, Telegraph we can say that. Okay. So, so the turning point was in two th why 2016 because that was the time uh, JNU police went inside JNU yes. and uh, and also other thugs went in and beat up uh, Kanaya and the Kanaya was also beaten up in the court room. So yes. that was something. Uh, I, I come from a very uh, very very political state, Kerala. Yes. There also student clashes happened, but I have never seen uh, police behaving the way they did. That barging day. into barging university. In and after that, the the government uh, supporting uh, that action. So that is how it it began as a reaction to them. Then from there it was, it steadily increased uh, criticism of the government. Uh, 
so Telegraph is based in West Bengal. It's a West Bengal based paper. And uh, how is the coverage vis-a-vis -vis West Bengal and rest of the country? And uh, does this decision of uh, how to cover national news and uh, local news, how is it uh, decided? Yeah, this was also, like I said, it was made easy for me because when the Telegraph was launched, we also have a very, very f famous and it's an institution, there's a paper called Anandabasa Patrika. We belong to the same group. So, when Telegraph was launched, there was a conscious decision, I was not there at that time, but there was a conscious decision by the ma management that it, it should not be treated as a uh, English translation of the Bengali newspapers. So, it should be, it should be a completely different, it should be an identity. That is why it was decided that Telegraph will focus on national news, whereas important state news may be one page. And the, in fact, the, at the beginning, Telegraph never used to carry any local news on the front page. Oh. To, it was, it, so, it was a national newspaper being published from a local uh, place you know it's a uh, the paper was character was national but its location was local so, so that way it that's was the unique uh, feature uh, because that was no, that was deliberately done because we had a very strong english newspaper the in bengal when telegraph was called statesman it's a statesman. statesman is a very big institution and statesman english was considered very good the language and all that so there was a campaign uh, by some critics of uh, the Anandabasa group saying that this English newspaper Telegraph is a Bengali translation. So, deliberately, that's why uh, Telegraph didn't have any, uh, the MJ Akbar was not a Bengali, the person who founded it. I am not a Bengali and we have, we have very diverse uh, people from all over India work for, for, so it was a conscious decision. Because of that, state news always used to take a back seat. We did not give that much importance to state news, the national, but it's not that when Nandigram or something like that, obviously then it will become big. So, this was also a criticism uh, when uh, we started criticizing Narendra Modi so much, people used to ask why not, uh, why we are not doing it, Mamata. But that is also again, I will not uh, say it is because we did not focus on uh, local news. That was also a conscious decision on uh, that only I am responsible for that because I felt that when you have uh, uh, such a danger like a, like a uh, communal danger like Modi and BJP on one side and Mamata Banjur that the definitely the bigger danger is Narendra Modi. So, it was a very conscious decision. I drew a lot of criticism um, uh, for taking that uh, and I think the paper also became unpopular in Calcutta because of that stand. Uh, because our readership is like I told you, it's Hindu, upper class, upper caste, uh, this thing. So, they naturally there was a bad, but I refused to uh, change because I still think that I took the right decision because when you have an elephant uh, coming, attacking your home and a ma mouse attacking your home, who will you, you there's no point uh, going after the mouse, you have to go after the elephant, you have to defend against the elephant, the bigger danger. That is. So this decision is advantageous, having national news from a state yeah. that also gives you a like outside focus at central politics yeah. and you also cover the state uh, coverage. But uh, so you already covered that thing. I was going to ask, how is it perceived in West Bengal I by West Bengal uh, intelligence? Uh, yeah. See, we don't have that. You have a very robust survey system. We don't have that. <laughs> uh, so we don't. So we. I have to go by what uh, um, uh, the feedback from the management. So management side usually. Uh, it is a marketing, uh, 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 marketing circulation, market, also. Ma ma circulation, circulation marketing. Market. They 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 give us the feedback. We don't have very strong. There have been reader uh, meetings and all that, and I, it's my problem also. I have not been regular in attending such meetings because of uh, usually these meetings are because people have to work, do work in the. So the readers usually will be free in the evening, but evening we have to produce the paper also. So I have not been able to attend. So general feedback that was given to me is that. Our readers are very unhappy uh, that we are not criticizing Mamata Banerjee mm -hmm. as much as we are criticizing Modi. But my reply to, but I cannot obviously write an editorial on that. My reply to the marketing colleagues was, uh, it is a conscious decision on my part because I think at this, when there is a crisis, in normal times I will take that criticism, you should have to be neutral. But when the country is facing a crisis like this, they cannot, we cannot be neutral. How can we be yes. neutral uh, in that? Uh, we hear it very often from our uh, colleagues in other publications that uh, a journalist should always be neutral. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also say, how can you, st we have to decide when is the time to be neutral. Yeah, we are when not when living you, in normal times. Fellow, when your neighbor is lynched, when your fellow citizens are attacked for what they eat, what they wear, how can you uh, remain neutral? That is the most criminal activity. So you are being a criminal if you remain neutral. You mentioned about Anand Bazar Patrike. Anand Bazar Patrike also has a national channel, national uh, yeah 
it is in uh, almost all languages yeah. so abp news that is in hindi and english uh, the coverage is probably it's quite contrary to what telegraph yes, is very very different and so was that also a conscious decision on part of the management uh, no i don't uh, think so because see, is it catering to different market no, and audience uh, no one is see the, this abp news is headquarters in new delhi so uh, noida actually now uh, they are part of the noida channels and now there is a term called noida channels because most of this go, uh, this godi media they operate from noida so one that that distance is there so i i personally don't know except maybe one reporter or maybe i don't know who the editor of uh, abp i don't know any of the anchors i don't i have never met them briefly i have met one or two of their main leadership in 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 some family engagements in calcutta otherwise i have never there's no interaction between us at all it's there's a complete between television and uh, print media even between anand basa patrika and the, the, the two bengali newspaper and uh, the english newspaper we are on different floors there's no occasion to unless you go out of your way to meet other journalists they, we can and so there is no it is it is consciously that much is consciously done but what the stand the newspaper takes i have to be fair to the management they the six years i have been editor they have not been a single instance of uh, uh, in, uh, in meddling or interference in any of the political coverage there may have been some preference about uh, some event needs to be covered or something that 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 is okay i have no problem with that Uh, but uh, i'm being honest here that, that nobody has told me you should do this or you should not do this so that freedom uh, is there that that was there uh, uh, at least till till that point it, it reached uh, till recently that freedom even then the when i was i was like then uh, told that uh, uh, the what i am doing is harming the newspaper because you you need readers i accept the point because we, you can't have a newspaper without readers so the what i was doing was driving away readers from the telegraph that was what i have been told so i accepted the point so i so i have to say that there's there was no interference but when the management uh, decided that it has reached the point where they can uh, my continuation will harm the newspaper that was when i was uh, given another role now i am no longer the editor of the paper um you mentioned about godi media and uh, we would say most of the media will put in that category most of the mainstream media telegraph is an exception and so there are many other independent media outlets in different languages many sm many in small capacity and uh, this alternate media independent media they are always uh, struggling for finances and how to maintain it and still retain their voice that's a challenge for the present alternate media you are coming from a mainstream print newspaper medium uh, how do you see this challenge in such times so what media and journalist can do to address this issue yeah see i think uh, uh, the, uh, the credibility of the mainstream so called we should know i don't know why we keep referring to mainstream it should be like i think there was a i was part of a conference uh, workshop two days ago there somebody very active they said it should be called manu stream media it is a manuvadi media most of the mainstream media is manu um, uh, they are on that is by the manuvadi class so uh, Uh, so uh, the credibility of uh, the one good thing is whether it, uh, obviously what is happening is very unfortunate and sad but one thing is the way the mainstream media has behaved itself its credibility they have they have they have destroyed themselves you know they have they have they have damaged themselves the credibility is i think is the lowest uh, never before even during the emergency uh, the there was a respect for media i don't see that uh, anymore where people people may be seeing watching all these uh, this hit Uh, this thing but there is no respect for journalists anymore people know people know who they who they are dealing with so that way i think the answer is alternative media and independent media but the, like you said it faces a lot of challenges one option and i probably the only option is it's a trans i mean in, in, across the it's a national collaboration that is only wherever we are, are strong share resources with others share people uh, share ideas with others this thing so that way we can minimize expenditure and the way forward i think is uh, collaboration and cooperation that is uh, the, 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 the networking the, the, the independent media will have to create a network of uh, i will create so that any anything happens anywhere in the country who are as resources there they go to the field immediately then perhaps they put the uh, whatever the uh, whatever reporting or the in in a in a common pool and from them people can use it they will it's like a, it's like a press trust of agency but an independent uh, new, uh, independent media sourcing agency like pool that kind of something that can be a beginning then later funding and other thing can discuss the immediate thing is to ensure that 
lot of stories are not being told in india unfortunately yes. that is so those stories need to be told and as early as possible uh actually this should this should have been the first question but i'm asking now uh you have decades of experience in journalism you have seen over the years uh how media was what media is now um uh we have criticized present day media it is godi media it is sold out media and over the years what do you see as change in media not since 2014 onwards even over the years and um, do you think the advent of social media is beneficial or has it been detrimental with lot of disinformation misinformation being there how do you see this and is it a, it's a, also a challenge for journalist yeah like like you said see media did not become what it is in 2014 Yes. media was always owned by uh, big business or big capitalist uh, capitalism big capital or by like i said the man who has always been like that even before independence and uh, but the very very big change i see it uh, till 2014 or maybe a little before that yes. media all these uh, media wherever biases discrimination all these used to come that was driven by self interest that they this particular media organization they may have an interest in it you know they may say project a particular project saying this is very good then later we realize that they may have a stake in that a real estate project mm -hmm. uh, or they may suddenly we see them suddenly becoming very environment friendly and opposing a, somebody's investment plan then later we realize that that is by a rival business group so so there was always an element of self interest in it mm -hmm. now what is very worrying and very very dangerous i think is there's no self interest there's no, they're not making any gains which means some inner uh, something they had bottled up all these uh, years that they are finding an opportunity to c come out and they are taking a stand now to support communal forces so what is that something if you since we, i don't have any other we don't have any other so we have to say that the communal bias and the class bias and the caste bias which was inherent in the media in those days that has finally found an avenue to express itself and that is what is happening now and which is it's a very dangerous because if it is self interest we can always tackle that uh, because you 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 give them the con if you do this this is what going to happen the consequences but now there is no consequences because they are completely protected by they will not face any consequences and probably some of them must be making gains also by following this communal agenda the writing agenda so that is but most people i realize they are not making any gains they they're just doing it because they want to do it you know which is a very very dangerous Uh, but that is about the mainstream media I'm saying uh, what about social media so i don't uh, think uh, there is uh, uh, disinformation fake news all these are any these are valid uh, reason for uh, controlling or uh, the social media social media is very very because, see lo look at uh, the last 10 year, eight years or 6 years the biggest stories have all come from uh, social media then the mainstream media has followed it up uh, you know it's always like there so many stories otherwise would never have been um, um, told you know see that up that student who was uh, one muslim student was slapped by the teacher and all yes. these stories would never get reported from the media no news agency we had we have very very big news agencies with so much on it they did not report it first so so um, disinformation fake news it should be unregulated but i know efforts are being made to regulate it but uh, because the internet it's a, it's a, it's a free place that freedom should be retained if you don't do that um again if, uh, what happened to print media it will happen on in social media also so on in the name of fake news disinformation those are very my and, and another thing is fake news is also we often over interpret uh, see those who those who go those who go to create trouble after seeing fake news they know very well it's fake it is not that uh, see anybody who actually cares for information they will not be seeing some uh, fake video and then going out and throwing stones at your neighbor they do it because they want to do it and they are getting an excuse to do it that's why it is not because of fake news they are doing uh, okay uh, thank you raj gopal sir for uh, coming and interacting with us i think it's a lesson for journalist young journalist especially to learn from uh, your experience and legacy and uh, will continue to look forward to the headlines of telegraph thank you all for listening to us and for similar news and discussions like this please follow and subscribe edina.com thank you